All right, we are recording. Uh, welcome everybody to LG Norris Kindergarten Orientation, the virtual edition. Um, trying something new this year because we definitely ask our teacher, a lot of our teachers throughout the year, uh, and we want to make sure um, you have a chance to meet them and see their faces and get to know the school a little bit. Uh, so my name is Mr. Higgins. I am the principal here at LG Norris. I've got people who are still trying to come in here. Let's see, admit all. All right. And this is my second year here at this school, um, my 24th year. Can you hear all that looping and beeping? It's people trying to get in. All right, hold on. Okay. Tom, we don't hear your background stuff. All right, good. Um, so it's my 24th year in public education here in Massachusetts. Uh, I spent 22 years in Eastern public schools uh, as a third grade teacher and as a pre-K to two uh, principal. And I've worked in a lot of schools over that those 24 years. And I can very honestly say we have the best faculty and staff here at LG Norse. Um, they are committed and passionate about what they do. And your children will be in superb hands when they start kindergarten here uh, in Norton Public Schools. So I am happy to say that and very confident in saying that. Um, I want to share with you a few things to just kind of get going. Our school day, we are early risers here at LG Norris. Uh, our school day starts at 745. It is an early an early day for our kiddos, even for some of our teachers, uh, but we're also out very early. Uh, we're, we're done by 2.05 in the afternoon. Um, we do mark students tardy after 745. Uh, it has been flexible in the last mile couple of years here just because um, of our traffic issues. So I'm going to say this once, twice, maybe 10 times tonight. Please, please, please put your children on the bus. It gives you extra time in the morning and in the afternoon. Uh, they get a chance to ride the bus. So please put your children on the buses. Our buses do unload at 735 here at school. If you would like to drive your, your kiddos, um, that's fine. Obviously, you can do that. We do ask you to line up on Plain Street uh, and wait until a staff member uh, notifies you to pull into the lot. We have our buses and our mini buses taking up uh, the front of the school. So we just ask that you follow all those rules of the road and around buses as well. Uh, our buses load each day here at 203 for afternoon dismissal. And again, please line up on Plain Street. We do have signage uh, and hopefully we'll have um, even the, our roads and lines painted in our driveway at some point this summer. So that would be exciting for me anyway. Um, Again, please, please, please put your kids on the bus. It's a good experience for them. Uh, and for safety's sake, please wait at the bus stop with them in the morning. I don't know many kindergarten parents who would ever put their kid at the bus stop without supervision. Uh, but just as a reminder, we want those five-year-olds with eyes on them getting on the bus, uh, getting off the bus each day. We ask that you be at the bus stop uh, when your child is dropped off. We will not release students. The bus drivers will not release students unless an adult is present. Um, if students uh, do not have an adult present on the bus, the students will ride the bus to the Yale School, which is the four or five building here in Norton, and you can pick your child up there. Uh, I always urge parents, please, please, please let us know here in the office where you would like your child to go every day. Uh, pretend like you're shipping a, a very fragile package across the country, which guess what you are, you're shipping a very fragile package here to us at school every day. We wanna make sure that package gets home back to you safely every day. Uh, so let us know if dismissals change, uh, what they're doing each day. And the person that you want to let that know is the classroom teacher, who I'll introduce to you in a minute, and also our, our um, office administrator, Ms. Tracy. Ms. Tracy is our, our school secretary here at LGN, super knowledgeable. She's worked here in Norton Public Schools for quite some time. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns about transportation, about lunches, you name it, Tracy, is your go-to. The office number is 508-285-0110. We'll share all this information with you again at other, other times as well. Uh, if your child is going to be sick out for any reason, please call the office to let us know. That way we can either um, mark it as an, a medical absence or um, you know, not just a, an absence from school. Uh, also, we send out automated messages each day in case you, know, um, you forget to call. It's just a reminder um, so that we know where your child is. Again, we want to know where kids are. We, we encourage them to be in school every single day. And um, we, again, want to support you in, in those things. So Miss Tracy is our, our number one. 
Also, we have an amazing, as I said, uh, kindergarten teaching staff here at LGN. These are our four current teachers here. We have Mrs. Sedell, Mrs. Bronco, Miss Hustleby, and Miss Klinger. I think collectively we probably have over 100 years of teaching under our belts. Uh, some of us have only been teaching, well, some of us have only been alive as long as I've been teaching. I won't name names, but um, it's, a, it's a phenomenal group. And uh, they're going to have a chance to talk with you a little bit about curriculum tonight and clue you in onto the amazing things that your kindergartners are going to get to do uh, next year and then in the in the uh, subsequent years here at LGM. So I'm going to turn it over first to, I believe, Mrs. Sedell. Yes. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming tonight virtually. Um, we're super excited for your kindergartners to start in the fall, and they'll have many opportunities, which we'll talk about later, as far as getting acclimated to the building, to meeting new friends. Some of them are coming from different schools or preschools or daycares, and they'll all have many opportunities to get to know each other before school even starts on the first official day. So I'm talking to you today about the reading and the writing curriculum. Um, so our students are very busy during the kindergarten day. It's quite different from preschool. Um, most of our mornings are based, academically based. Um, afternoons are more geared toward um, choice time, which is when they get areas to play in the classroom. They also um, have opportunities to go to a special, which you'll hear about soon. And um, we do not have rest time in full day kindergarten. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, some of them might be used to that in the daycares and preschools that they're currently at. Um, but honestly, they don't miss any type of nap time. They just keep on rolling with the day and it's super busy and exciting. So for reading and writing, um, during the day we have a, a phonics um, based program um, and we're touching upon all of the components of reading, phonemic awareness, which is when the students are learning their letters, their sounds, how to manipulate them, um, phonics, putting those sounds together to form words, um, vocabulary, which each new um, week will introduce new words to them that may be something that they have never heard of before. So we'll have visuals, we'll show um, those vocabulary words in text, um, they'll be using them in sentences and whatnot. Um, they will actually learn how to read in kindergarten, which is very exciting. Right now, we're seeing the students really blossom this time of school year with their words um, in their word bank that they have for sight words. As of right now, we have 40 sight words in kindergarten that um, they will practice. Um, some they can sound out, but most they need to learn from memory. So we have flashcards and games we play um, that we practice each week, learning four or five new sight words a month. So they have plenty of time for that practice and repetition. And some of them aren't even ready until midway through the school year. So not to panic when we first introduce these words. Um, they have many, many months to practice. Um, and we also talk about comprehension, like the stories that we read. Can they recall main events, the characters that are in the stories, the setting, where things take place? So something super exciting that just happened this year, um, the um, the ELA committee here in Norton for grades K to five, we piloted two new programs for ELA and we've made our decision on which program that will be for the fall. So it's brand new and it's um, up to date and actually super exciting about all the components that we can provide for the children. Um, that we are going to present that, um, that choice that we've made to the school committee this week, actually. And there'll be more information to share on that program in the fall with all of you. And you'll be able to see all of the big books and all of the cool tools they'll get to use for reading and writing. Um, and those will all have foundational skills as our main focus with rhyming and letter recognition, of course, at first, um, letter sounds and decoding words with cool decodable books for the students to use and to bring home. Um, and 
again, just writing is fun too. We, we talk about how students have an idea. And at first we just draw pictures about our writing. And then we learn how to label our pictures with maybe beginning sounds of words. And as the year progresses, we, we become writers. They learn how to put those words together or phonetically spell them or um, try their best to, to kind of write a, a form a sentence by the end of June, but um, to show what their their picture is about. And they are so thrilled to become authors themselves. We make some class books also to share at conferences and things. So you can really see how the students have progressed. So that's basically it as far as reading and writing. Um, so some fun things that are coming up in the fall for your children, especially getting an opportunity to use that new program that will be adopted. Can you, can you tell Mrs. Sedell was one of the piloting teachers of that program? She is super in love with it and we're excited too. She put a lot of work into, into getting that uh, getting that going this year, so thank you. Uh, next up is Mrs. Bronco to talk about mathematics. Oh, Mrs. Bronco's muted. There we go, sorry. I'm having, I'm having some technical difficulties with my camera, I apologize. Um, so we adopted a brand new math program this year. It's called Stepping Stones. Everybody's pretty excited about it. Um, it's a spiral curriculum, which means where we end, first grade is going to pick up um, and so on and so forth with all the grades. Sorry, I am, I'm looking at my notes here. Sorry about that. Um, and it's really, it's a slower pace. Um, some of the other math programs that we've used kind of went at a, a faster pace. Stepping Stones is really a slow curriculum so it gives you plenty of time to work on the skills that you're learning the practice books that the kids have a great um some parents that have kids already in the school have seen those worksheets coming home the pictures are nice and big it makes it easier for those kids to do counting and cutting um, it's very interactive we have a component on our smart boards which is really great for those visual learners so we can pull up the practice pages and we can do examples with them before we send them off to their desks to do it on their own. And it also gives us lots of opportunity for um, extra practice. So if there's any skills that we feel kids need a little bit more time on, we can pull those kids in small groups and it just gives us a lot more opportunities to, to keep practicing those skills. So, so far, this is our first year. You know, we haven't completed the year yet, but the kids really like it. It's easy to follow and it has all the components that we've been looking for all in one. So we're really happy about that. Thanks, Jen. Another uh, component of our math program is our ST Math. Uh, it's a computer base that the kids use on their iPad in kindergarten. Uh, all the kids use with Chromebooks. And uh, I don't know if you can see, we've got Gigi. He's the, the, or the, the penguin Gigi is the main character in all the, uh, the problems that the kids solve in ST Math. And this week I'll be handing out GGs to classes that met their puzzle goal. So it's a um, St. Patrick's Day themed GG this week. And the students put these, or the teachers put these on their classroom doors to show um, that they're on a roll with, with ST Math. Uh, last year, I, the goal is each year to have about 80% of the school completing their puzzle goals. Last year as a school, I believe we completed almost 95%, um, which is pretty amazing. We actually have a banner. It's like our, our Patriots uh, Super Bowl banner hanging in our cafeteria. Uh, and the kids really have a, a great time with it. It really teaches math skills in a, in a different way, uh, problem solving skills, especially without using words, which is great for kindergarten because it's it's all picture based and, and um, they're able to really be successful with that. And a lot of us have, we have little GGs in our classroom. The children got to choose their own GG and they can see their progression in the classroom. We have bulletin boards and they jump from iceberg to iceberg as they complete puzzles. And a yeah. lot of them have already completed their journey and they're super excited about that. Then they get to go to a challenge. So they do their challenges, you know, for the rest of the year. So it's, it is really exciting. We actually got to meet Gigi in person a couple weeks ago. Ms. Hustle being got a, a picture with, with Gigi. Uh, moving on to social studies and science, Ms. Hustleby. We did get a picture with Gigi, and I think it made us celebrities, but yes. that's just, you know, my opinion. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Ms. Hustleby. It's so exciting to meet all of you. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about social studies and science. We use a couple different online-based programs, and it's half online and half um, 
physical copy. Um, for social studies, we use scholastic magazines called Let's Find Out. The kids love them. Um, first of all, it makes them kind of look like adults reading a magazine because a lot of kids aren't used to seeing magazines anymore. So it's very exciting for them to be able to see those. Um, there is an online component to that, just like Ms. Bronco was saying, for those visual learners, which is a great part of the program. It comes with a movement break that's based around the lesson. Um, I think the one I'm doing this week is all about spring birds that are coming back. Um, so it talks about different components like weather, animals. Um, we just had one for Black History Month, Martin Luther King uh, Jr. and um, Stevie Wonder. They're learning a whole bunch of different aspects through these magazines. Um, we learn about hibernation, life cycles. We actually are about to start hatching chicks um, in the next couple of weeks, which is very exciting. Everybody's very excited about that. Um, and we also are starting to learn about like seasons. Uh, I, I believe we like, I know I taught that earlier in the year, um, just to bring that component in. Um, but the kids really love the back and forth aspect of the social studies and science. Um, they really love learning and making themselves feel like scientists and learning about people they didn't know before, or aspects of animals they didn't know before. So everything that we're doing has been a big thumbs up from the students, which is exactly what we like to see. Definitely. Thanks, Ms. Hustleby. Um, Ms. Klinger, we're going to talk about specialists. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're all super excited to have you here and even more excited to see you in the fall. Um, I'm gonna talk about our specialists. Our students see specialists at every school day. This includes um, art with Mrs. Kabat, gym class with Mrs. Kenny or physical education, music with Mr. Place, and then computer with Mrs. Kashtian. And then along with this, they do get to visit library once a week. Um, in each of these, we like to call them specials. Um, some parents will be like, what is a special? Uh, but this is what we're talking about, specials or specialists. Um, they all learn different components while they're in these rooms. They get to play music instruments in music class and learn about different songs and even just rhymes and things like that. Um, art class, they come up with some really beautiful pieces out of art class with Mrs. Kabat. She uh, does a lot of themed things, you know, winter time with snowmen and really pretty flowers for the spring. You'll see them if you ever, any of you come by LG, um, you'll see them hanging up now in the front. And then computer or STEAM, they do science and technology, engineering and math in Mrs. Cashin's room. They do a lot of um, use of different apps on their iPads or different components with building things and crafts like recyclables and things like that. Um, and then physical education, which is usually the favorite for most of the kids, or at least this year, um, they get to see Mrs. Kenny twice a week, uh, which works out really nicely, gets all their energy out, and they play some really fun games. They get to learn to be a team. They learn new sports, um, and they get to learn about their health and their bodies, too, and, um, you know, about uh, your heart and how it works and and about healthy foods and things like that. Um, and then along with library, library is a little bit of a shorter time period. Um, right now, it's really checking out books and sometimes reading a book. Uh, and they get to bring the books back to the classroom and you know share them with the class or read them throughout the day or look at them. So it's really run by volunteers and Mrs. Mr. Miss our um, library specialist. And they have a great time with these. They always come back happy and wanting to go to all of them. Um, I'm sure they have their favorites, but they're really happy when they come back from all of these. Yeah, we're lucky to have the, the specialists we do, and especially having kindergartners in physical education twice a week. Um, this is the first time any I've been in any school that had that, and it is amazing to have K and one students um, with Mrs. Kenny twice a week. So, uh, and this year we had some third grade friends who were who were partners with our kindergartners, some of our kindergartners, and um, that's gone really well too having uh, role models in, in physical education because 20 to 22 kindergartners running around with one adult can be tricky at times. So having <laughs> some older kids to help out is definitely a, a cool thing. Um, fun times in kindergarten. I, I tell you, I walk into a kindergarten class, you're ever in a bad mood, walk into a kindergarten class and there's always something fun and, and amazing going on. So Mrs. Siddell, you want to talk a little bit about the fun? Sure. Day? 
Sure, absolutely. So um, I'm sure if you've had a kindergartner at our school, you know about these fun events that we do. Starting in the um, early fall, um, we're just getting acclimated to school. Um, it takes them about a month or so to get those routines down. But once we get the ball rolling and we're heavy into fall and Halloween's around the corner, we love to um, have a special day called Pumpkin Day. The students all bring in a special small pumpkin. Um, parents are invited in if you can make it out of work and you come in and help your child and others decorate their pumpkins. Um, we have another special day um, around the holiday season and um, toward winter, Gingerbread House Day, where the students are, again, parents are invited to that event as well. Um, and they can come in and help decorate a gingerbread house with their child and with others at their table. Um, we do a lot of fun things as far as 100th day of school. Um, we are going on a treasure hunt, a hundred steps around the school to find a treasure, or we're f bringing in 100 things and sharing them or counting by tens, counting by fives. Um, as you can see in the picture there, they have 100 cups. They're making a really cool sculpture, working on team building skills and um, taking turns, especially. They love that day. Um, friendship Day or Valentine's Day, we, we celebrate as well bringing in valentines for their their friends they love passing out valentines and decorating their valentine bags um, we're just around the corner to St. Patrick's Day. Sometimes we might, you know, make a fun craft or do um, maybe even a special little jello drink or something. We used to do more of that before COVID though with, with all the uh, food restrictions, we do less of that now. But, um, and before the end of the year, we will also do some um, fun spirit days toward the end there. Like we might have beach day where the kids can bring in some beach day, um, things that they would take to the beach and we set up outside in the backfield with like beach blankets or towels and put the music on and they can have a really great time. So it's always a good time as Mr. Higgins said in kindergarten, just come on down to our classrooms and, and you'll have a good, good laugh or um, enjoy just watching five and six year olds um, have a great time together. And play is so important. I mean, there's so many opportunities for our kiddos to play and collaborate as Kirsten said, um, because play is the work of children and they work hard at it. We've, we've also have, have a recess uh, during the day, half an hour of recess, in addition to those movement breaks in, in phys ed. And um, our teachers do a great job of giving kids choice and voice as kindergartners in their, in their classrooms. Uh, outdoor fun on the playground, Mrs. Bronco. We've got, these are some older pictures. We've got to update these, but we have a beautiful playground. Would you like to talk about that, Jen? Yes, we did. We actually got, um, two new big apparatuses. We got a real big one last spring, I believe it was. And then just two weeks ago, we added another piece. So a lot of things needed updated. There's a lot of great climbing apparatuses, lots of slides. We used to only have one slide. Now there's two slides. Um, there's, we got all brand new swings, which is really great. The Parent board has donated lots of toys. We have a big chest out there now. We keep all the balls and there's hula hoops and there's bubbles and there's chalk. And so there's lots of things for kids to do. Some kids love to be on the playground. Others like to be on the swings. Other kids, we have soccer nets now. So it's really fun to see the kids form their little groups and go out there and actually kick the soccer ball around. Or some kids love the art. So they're on the pavement and they're drawing with the chalk. Um, really thankful that we got the new playground equipment. It's, it's really yeah, all fun. thanks to our, our parent organization who, who raised a ton of money through our fun runs um, and then just kept working at it. There's some musical instruments out there as well. Um, we have one of the best playgrounds around. I swear the, the amount of space that they have to to kind of you know move around and, and um, play all sorts of games and things is great. I believe the PTO is going to be working on trying to get some um painted games on our on our blacktop as well soon so you know four squares from the old school games four square and hopscotch uh maybe some maps and things so i'm excited to see that that evolve as as we move to uh also added that great fence it's all fenced in now so yeah, yeah, right. back there, but it's around the really place nice structure is important too yeah that's been great um miss hustleby i know mrs sidell kind of touched upon these things i don't did anyone have anything to add to these 
I can add a little bit. I think that something that Miss Adel just brought up that was an important part to talk about in these special days um, was the connections that the kids make during these days, especially in the first month. Um, I saw a lot of connections on Apple Day, which is one of our first special days. They bring in an apple and the whole day is based around apple science. You're like feeling the apple, cutting it open, looking at how many seeds. We're reading apple books. We're doing apple counting. It's all based around that day. Um, but I think that was like the first day this year that I saw a lot of kids go up and they want to show somebody else the apple they brought in. And it's a great opening to a friendship. Um, these days, like pumpkin day is fun. Gingerbread day is fun with lots of candy and frosting and all the things that excite children um, and teachers. But um, I do think that the basis of these days is creating that community and learning together and knowing that they are all learning together is a huge aspect of these days that should be brought up. Pumpkin Volcano is always a really big hit to see their faces because they're not really sure what's going to happen. And it's just when it comes out the eyes and it comes through the nose and the mouth. And just like how many children have never put their hand inside a pumpkin? That's another one of my favorites. They Some kids, you know, have had that experience, but many have never done it. So that's their first time actually putting their hand in, feeling what it feels like. It's cold. It's slimy. We learn all these new vocabulary words. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we are a PBIS school, which means positive behavior interventions and supports. Uh, Norton has been working at this for quite a number of years now. Actually, our, our um, director of pupil personnel and one of our BCBAs were, were just in Chicago actually presenting at a national conference um, because of the work that Norton Public Schools has done with this. So our, our mantra here at, at uh, LGN and across the schools is to be respectful, responsible, and safe. Um, I do morning announcements every day, video morning announcements that get sent out to the teachers. Uh, they're on YouTube if you want to check it out. You can search my name, Thomas Higgins, and maybe LGN, or I forget what the actual username is, but um, you can find them out there. And uh, we recite our LGN pledge every morning um, and the Pledge of Allegiance every morning just to remind the kids of what it means to be a student here at LGN, being respectful, responsible, and safe. Um, so our students, if they are following those guidelines and doing the things that we ask of them, um, they get these purple, little purple uh, hearts. This one's from a, a student in Miss Hustleby's class who actually just uh, won our Purple Heart Choice Board. So I have these choices for our kiddos who get uh, selected. We choose five names each Thursday, and on Friday I announce them in announcements, and they can get a prize from the prize box or do show and tell with Mr. Higgins. Um, they can be Miss Tracy's Morning Helper, which is a very popular one, have a positive note sent home, choose their seat at lunch, things of that nature. Uh, we started one in the cafeteria recently. We have a PBIS committee here, and um, the get a ticket for a free ice cream has been <laughs> quite a popular one as well. Kids love that. Um, but our teachers really promote this, and the students can recite for you what it means to be a respectful, responsible, and safe student. Um, they know the pledge. I try to do it very slowly for our kindergartners. Sometimes I forget that we have five-year-olds in the building at the beginning of the year, and I kind of say it at my own adult pace and have to be reminded that we have five-year-olds who are just learning it, uh, but they do a really great job at it. Uh, we also have a way for teachers, adults in the building to nominate full classrooms of students. Mrs. Kenny, our phys ed teacher, does a really great job with this, and she feels like a, a classroom of students has done a, an amazing job of being respectful, responsible, and safe. She nominates them for a special Sparkly Heart Award. Um, those go on their doors, uh, the classroom doors as well, with the GGs, and kids are just um, really proud of the work they've done to, to earn those special Sparkly Hearts and uh, to earn those GGs. Um, here's a couple of pictures of what a Purple Heart or a special sparkly heart looks like. And there in the middle is our tower that the students will drop their purple heart into. And um, as I said, we choose five of the purple ones and then three of the, the cafeteria ones, which are white hearts um, every Thursday and announce those on Friday. And then when we fill that tower up to the ribbon to the top there, um, each classroom has a choice board and the students can vote on what they would like their special prize to be. Some students might choose extra recess or, um have a snack outdoors or have you know go visit another classroom and swap teachers i think was one of them so teachers have gotten pretty creative with the rewards for kids um 
And we do have a lot of buy-in. You know, most schools, you're hoping for about 80% of kids to buy into this. We're definitely over 90% of our kids are, are buying into this each day and showing respectful, responsible, and safe behavior. Uh, and those students who might have a more difficult time, maybe they're new to school environment or they've never been around other kids before, um, we have other supports for them to help them along the way. Um, supports like me, some of the other people we're going to see in our slideshow in just a minute. Um, but, you know, as a, as a principal, I've been doing this for 11 years now. Um, and I say I give kids lots and lots of chances. We have to remember they're five years old. They've only been around for five short years on this planet and they need chances to, to make mistakes and that they're, they're learning. Uh, I think a lot of times kids or even parents are upset when their child comes to visit me in my office. As you can see, it's a pretty fun place. Um, I try to kind of turn the principalship on its head and, and forge relationships with kids so they're excited to come see me. Even if they've made a mistake, they know they're gonna be treated fairly and that we're going to help them uh, make better choices. So that's our PBIS initiative. Um, Mrs. Bronco is going to introduce some other folks that you might hear their names or see their faces around the school building as the school year starts. So this is um, Mrs. Baker. She's our team chair. She works with families around special education, um, students that maybe are on IEPs or um, are new to an IEP. This is um, Becky Pontini. She is our school psychologist. Um, she's been in Norton for quite a long time and she works with both students and families. If you have any concerns about social or emotional education or educational concerns, um, Mrs. Pontini is the person to contact and she works within the classrooms. You know, she's always showing her face, kids know her. Mrs. Blanchett is our school adjustment counselor. Um, she works in the classrooms as well. She also runs social skills groups, um, teaching kids just to take turns, playing board games, what it means to you know, have conversations, to wait, to take your turn, working cooperatively. She runs some um, lunch bunch groups where she'll take a group of children from lunch and they get to eat in her office just to have you know, opportunities to talk about their day, about their families. Um, maybe something is on their minds, something small. It could be something small, like they're just nervous about coming to school. Um, that's the time that they can open up to her and, and you know, let her know if there's anything bothering them or things they need to be working on. And again, we're very lucky here at LGN um, to have a, a full-time team chair, a full-time school psychologist, and a full-time school adjustment counselor. Um, it's, it's pretty big. I, I've been in schools that all, all of those roles are part-time people uh, and you're sharing them with other schools either across the district or maybe multiple places so um, we are very lucky to have have these folks and they're amazing at what at what they do as well and she's always available to the parents so if there's anything that you sometimes you need to call the school and give us a heads up you know my child was having a difficult morning coming to school um, she'll be out there at the car or or at the bus to greet your child and you know Maybe just take them, take them down to her office for a little bit, make sure they're okay, have a little chat with them, and then bring them back to class. So she's really a good resource to reach out if any any concerns that you have. She's the person to contact. Especially with kindergarten, if it's their first experience, experience. in the school, uh, we've got all these people to, to help them out. This is Miss Courtney, our school nurse. Um, the children love her. We have... <laughs> Children that love her so much, they want to go down and visit her, even when they're feeling well. Yeah. <laughs> we call them frequent flyers, but she's awesome, and she doesn't mind the children coming down. There are those kids who just need to just to see her and say hello, and she's great with that. So, Miss Courtney. And Mr. Joe, you'll probably hear a lot about Mr. Joe. He is a very uh, popular custodian. The kids love him. He's really great with the kids. He dresses up in costume costumes during Halloween, just any kind of like anything we're doing at LG, he always has, he has a shirt for it. He has a hat for it. He really gets involved. And he actually is one of the choices that Mr. Higgins has. If you, if the student wins one of those special um, hearts, Mr. They can be Mr. Joe's helper for the day. So this little guy is actually helping him sweep and um, do some cafeteria duties, which they love. He's got the gloves on and everything. That's Emmett. He's a big kid. He's a big kid himself. Uh, Mr. Joe is on Twitter or X, whatever you prefer, at Joe Trotman LGN. Uh, you can give him a follow. Uh, I believe our 
some of our teachers, Miss Klinger, you're on there too, Klinger's Clan, um, and Mrs. Sidel, Sidel's Minions is on there. So uh, we'll share those things as the year starts. I'm on there as well, but um, yeah, Mr. Joe is is, uh, is definitely a popular fella around here. Um, so as I said, you know, make sure that you're telling us where you would like your child to go each and every day. Um, you know, obviously if it's the bus every day, we, we, we'll know that. Um, if it's pickup every day, we'll know that. But um, if any any plans change or, um, you know, you're alternating days, whatever it might be, we're super flexible, obviously. We just want to make sure your child goes to the appropriate people every day. Uh, only people that you designate will, will not release children uh, without a note or an email or a phone call from you. Uh, again, a designated adult must meet the bus each day. Um, our teaching staff uh, will help children load the buses each day, and I'm out there each morning getting the kids off the buses. Um, as I said, again, put 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 your child on the bus, bus, bus. Um, Mr. Haynes, may I interject for one second? I was just thinking about the notes. Um, so that students have a, a school home communication folder that you'll receive on the first week of school. And in there, you can leave us any type of physical notes that you want us to know of a change in dismissal. For instance, maybe that child has a dentist appointment and you need to pick them up early that day. It's best if we really know in the morning. Um, I know that Miss Tracy um, is so grateful for parents letting her know as soon as possible rather than toward that busy time at the end of the day where you might say oh my goodness I forgot I have to call the school and tell the office that my child's being picked up and not to put them on the bus so if you can think of those things the morning of and let us know in their school home communication folder or through an email we can forward that to Miss Tracy so she can notify the proper bus um, people or um, anyone else like champions if your child goes to an after school program that's designated at our school. Um, it's just very important that we know as soon as possible rather than last minute on things like that. Thank you, Kristen. Um, and Mrs. Siddell just mentioned, made me realize we, we do have an after school program here at LGN called Champions. Uh, we don't have a before school care because we start so early. Um, generally, parents are able to, to drop off before work. But um, Champions is available after school up until 6 p.m. Um, and we do have quite a few families taking advantage of that. Um, so we can have information of that um, as, the, as the school year gets closer. Um, oh, also put your kids on the bus. Put them on the bus. <laughs> uh, the next step in this process will be kindergarten screening. Um, you'll accompany your child here to LGN and our teacher team will uh, screen your child. You also fill out uh, a parent information form. We don't have a date scheduled just yet, but most likely mid-June. Uh, school lets out here around the 13th, and we're trying to figure out uh, when the schedule for the, the screening will occur. So we will send out more information, uh, hopefully soon on that. Um, lots of ways to communicate here from LGN and then from home to school, as Mrs. Siddell said, we have a, a take home folder that will go home with them each day and you can send back you know, notes um, and things of that nature. Um, moving on into the summer, we do have a popsicle party here on the playground in late August, right before the school year gets kicked off for our kindergarten families. So we invite you here. Um, we've had great weather, weather the last two years. It's been a great day with a, a brand new playground out there. It's a lot of fun for the kids. Uh, we have popsicles for them. We gift them a book uh, the night before kindergarten, and it's just a, a good chance for the kids to meet each other and maybe some families to meet each other. Uh, you get to meet your child's classroom teacher and some other students in their classroom as well. So we, uh, again, it's usually the week before, right, Kristen, the week before school starts uh, in late August. Then we also have an open house in September where you have a chance to come and see your child's classroom um, and see a presentation more specifically geared to your, your child's classroom and, and the uh, from the, their teacher. Um, we encourage phone calls and emails. Um, students on IEPs or other special education services will get progress reports each year, usually with the report cards. Uh, we have parent-teacher conferences twice a year. Those are the spring ones are coming up next week. And then uh, report cards, as I mentioned, are three times a year, November, March, and June. We also have lots of special events. We've had uh, LGN movie night, we had Providence Bruins Night for Norton Public Schools, which was a blast. Um, all those special events that our, our teachers host in their classrooms that we always look forward to. 
Uh, we also have a chance for parents to get involved through PTC meetings. That's our parent teacher connection. Those are scheduled on the first Wednesday of each month at 7 p.m. right here in the LGN cafeteria. Um, that first meeting in September is usually the biggest one. We have a lot of a lot of folks come to that one and see how they can help support the school. Um, another special event I think I mentioned before, but we raise a, a ton of money each year with our Boosterthon Fun Run. Um, it's a way for for kids and families to help raise money for our school and then uh, pay towards those great things like a new playground or special events. We had Uch the Yo-Yo Man visit us this year. We've had a lot of authors. We're gonna have a lot of authors come this spring and visit with our students. So uh, lots of exciting enri enrichment going on. Uh, and many of these things get communicated through a, um, a communication website called Parent Square. So if you hear Parent Square, get emails from Parent Square, you're kind of automatically on there when you enroll here at school. Uh, so any communications that come from me, uh, our teachers use it as well, or Miss Tracy about special events, we will use Parent Square. And you can actually, I think, reply to things. Um, and I'll get an email saying that you replied to a Parent Square email. Uh, you can also email me directly. It's a teacher's first initial and last name. So I'm T Higgins at Norton.k12.ma.us. Um, I think all that stuff's on our website too. Parent Square is also an app. So you can just download yeah. it on your phone and get a little notification. Great thing about Parent Square is you can get phone calls, text messages, emails, alerts. So if and you can message us too. If a bus is running late or um, you know, we need to get information out quickly to parents, it's it's a really nice thing. Um, you can also have a setting where you it, uh, you get it at your preferred time. So I'll send like the monthly um, newsletter, for example, and some parents like to get it immediately. Other parents like to get it maybe later that night or the next day. Um, Kristen, did you want to talk about parent involvement a little bit more? Sure. Yeah. Um, so again, as you can see, it says parents as supporters. Um, we definitely rely on you to be um, a team with us as far as helping your child succeed in kindergarten and get them where they need to be in their educational future. So as far as um, how you can support at home, there's many opportunities. We send home newsletters um, with ideas on math fun activities you can do that are hands-on. Um, letter games, um, sound games, um, even when we have our sight words that we introduce each month, we um, ask for your support to maybe make some little, you know, flashcards or magnetic um, words on the refrigerator and practice those as much as you can to let us know that we're kind of working together as a team to help your child be successful. Um, you can also be an active partner in your child's education in our schools by maybe being a part of that PTC parent organization that we have that's wonderful, that provides so many great um, extras for our students. You can volunteer to be um, a special classroom event helper. Um, we need library helpers. This year we're actually, we were short for kindergarten and we were lucky enough to have um, a parent be willing to stay that is us using the older grade um, but she's helping kindergarten as well. She's has a daughter in second grade, but she's helping us. Um, so if you have an extra, you know, time in your day, um, feel free to sign up to help out in the library. I know Miss Dermis would love that. We also have opportunities to be mystery readers. Um, it, it varies by class how each teacher does that, but I do know that all of us. Um, we invite you to come in to read a story to the class. And it's so fun to see your child's face when you, you're you at the door and they didn't know you were coming because you've kept it a great secret. And um, they're so thrilled to see you come in and read a story. So those are all different ways that you can um, be involved. And um, I, we we welcome that. We, we love to have you as a part of your child's education. Definitely. As I would say, you're the experts on your kids. You know them the best. Um, and I encourage parents to reach out to teachers with any concerns or questions. As I always tell parents, the kindergarten teacher is your, your number one in terms of, I have a question, who do I reach out to? You're, they spend six hours a day plus with your child. Um, I, I see them as much as possible. I try to get to know and, and know every kid's name. Um, but the classroom teacher knows your child here at school best because you're the expert on them at home, I always encourage parents to reach out to classroom teachers first. Uh, there's nothing they haven't heard before. There's nothing they haven't dealt with before. Um, they've seen it all, they've done it all. So, so reach out. Um, the other thing I was thinking, if you're crazy enough uh, to wanna to substitute teach here at LGN, um, 
we we do and i would say i i say that jokingly because it is a, a phenomenal place and i know we have some parents actually on tonight listening who do sub here have older students here and, and we're lucky to have them so if uh if that's something you're thinking about maybe you were a teacher in a former life or or you have always thought hey maybe i'd like to help out and get paid for it too um you don't have to sub in your child's classroom uh, but we are always desperate for substitute teachers um as i mentioned for our teachers to go to conferences and things like that um or even when they're sick because teachers do get sick with 22 um kindergartners in their class uh so there's that let's see what else oh that's it so i just wanted to thank you all for coming um i did mention uh, i'm on twitter slash x as well uh my handle is at 610 principal and you, i know you can't tell with me sitting down but i am six feet ten inches tall which is, can be kind of intimidating to some uh parents kids are not intimidated by me at all which i love they shouldn't be because as i said uh, i'm a pretty pretty friendly principal and uh, i want them to feel at home here at school and i, I think you know it's funny that as the kids get to know me they go mr Andrew, you're really not even that tall anymore uh, i said yeah because you're growing i'm i'm staying the same height i'm actually probably shrinking at this point um so give a follow at 610 principal uh you can also check out our hashtag little school big heart um on twitter slash x and again, you can check out our YouTube channel. We do have a lot of student voice on there as well. Um, this year, especially, we've had students contributing to Black History Month, um, Women's History Month this, this month. We have a, a lot of our multilingual learners are sharing things that they're learning with Mrs. Apustis, which I realize we didn't have a slide for her. We should definitely have a slide for her next year. Um, and just, uh, we've got poetry and riddles and you name it. Kids are contributing all the time. So. It's, uh, it's a great way to start our day and, and you know make this place feel like a home. So we appreciate you coming tonight. If you do have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll stay on and, and answer any questions you might have. And again, um, you can always email, call, uh, and then we will communicate more events as, as those get closer. But again, thank you so much for, for coming tonight. And the teachers and I will stay here for a few more minutes. In case you have a question, you can put it in the chat. Oh, distance radius for those who can use the bus. So I believe it's uh, outside of two miles is free. And then it is, uh, there is a payment for if you are under two miles. So if you live close to the school, uh, you have to pay. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the, the price tag is on that for a yearly rate, um, but that would be the business office. You can get in touch with them. That makes sense. Just one question. It's pretty good. We did a good job, team. Nice work. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Danielle. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording. Thanks, Sue.